Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another video. In today's editing tutorial, we are going to check out how to edit like Alan Palander. Let's get into it. awaited how to edit like dot 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 photographer. This is by far the most asked question I get on my YouTube comments, on my Instagram DMs, Instagram comments, as people asking me to do tutorials on how to edit like certain photographers. And just before we get into this video, I need to explain something quick. If you've been following me for a while, you've probably discovered my channel through one of these tutorials and you've noticed that I haven't posted one of them in quite a while. And there's many reasons why I haven't been doing this. If you're just here for the editing tutorial, you can skip past this talking bit. I bet I just need to explain this and get this out before I get into it. So the reasons as to why I haven't been posting these how to edit like famous photographer videos is I just felt like I was infringing on their creativity. It was kind of like I was just showing other people how to copy their style and not be unique in their own way where these photographers have taken years to develop their style and now people can just come and watch YouTube videos and achieve their style in like 10 minutes or something. But then I got to thinking a bit more and I learned through YouTube tutorials. I learned from copying other people and trying to edit like them to figure out different styles, how they do things. So what I want these tutorials to be is more than just copying a photographer. I want it to be a process of learning to see how they do certain things, what settings they use to achieve certain styles and looks, and make it something more than their style. Take different influences and make your own style from what you've learned in these videos. So I hope it goes without saying that I want to do these videos in the most respectful manner I can to these artists. I'm not trying to copy them. I'm doing this out of my own brain. I'm not stealing your presets. I'm just going based off what I see and trying to teach others how to achieve a certain look. I urge you guys to please go check out the artists that are featured in the series and support them as fully as you can. If you want to edit exactly like them and you want their style, go ahead and buy their presets. A lot of them do sell presets, so I'll link everybody's presets down in the description below, so please go check that out. But without further ado, I'm gonna stop speaking and let's get into this editing tutorial. All right, so jumping into the work of Mr. Alan Palander, 391K on Instagram. His work is absolutely phenomenal. Just scrolling through it, we can see that there's a really high focus on the blue and orange splits so I'm gonna try and achieve that in the edits that we do as well he has quite a lot of contrast in his work as well really pushing those blacks and he also tends to get quite a lot of geometric shapes in his work looking at architecture I I think he studied architecture, so that influences his work quite a bit. So as an example, I have decided to use my own shots from New York City, again, just following that same geometric pattern that he uses. And we are gonna be using this shot as the base. It's kind of similar. And then I'm also gonna go over to some other photos that I've selected and show you how to apply that style to some of the other cityscape geometric shots. But without further ado, let's get into how we actually edit this photo. So first, things first I am gonna start off by bringing these highlights all the way down Alan seems to not really have pure whites in his photos these highlights are always generally quite faded so I'm gonna bring the highlights all the way down and then I'm also gonna take the shadows up quite a bit I know I said he really likes to emphasize the blacks but we do still see quite a bit of detail in the shadows so I'm bringing the shadows all the way up and then I'm gonna take the blacks down to keep that contrast in there I'm also just gonna bring the whites up a bit again just to keep the contrast in the shot so I think that's good for the basic settings right now I'm gonna leave the clarity exactly where it is leave the vibrance but I'm gonna bring the saturation down to about minus 15 most of these shots are pretty desaturated I would say up next I'm gonna move on to the tone curve but before we get on to the main RBG tone curve I'm gonna come over to the individual RBG channels if you don't have the option to select the channels make sure that you have this button clicked on the bottom right you might be seeing this at a first glance but just click that and then you'll be able to do the point editor and then click on channel and we're gonna go over to the reds and start with that and I'm just gonna make a basic S curve of just bringing up the highlights just a little bit and this will really start to affect the tone so you don't want to be too dramatic with this from from the start I'm gonna drop a point lower here and it's looking really weird now but we will balance it out when we get to the other channels as well then you're gonna to want to go over to the green and we're gonna do kind of the same thing I'll show you how this becomes important a bit later in the process where we'll really start to push those tones and then lastly on the blue 
this should start to balance the whole picture out and already we can see that it's starting to add quite a bit of contrast to the photo so what you want to make sure you do on the blue rbg channel is make sure that the bottom end of this tone curve is slightly pushed up more than the other ones you can see that if i do it dramatically it starts to add blue to the shadows and alan definitely has some blue in those shadows so i'm going to bring that up very slightly and then he kind of has a little bit of green as well, so we could even bring the greens up just a little bit as well, not too much. We are going to add to this in the split toning as well, so don't worry just yet. I'm now going to go back to the main RBG curve, and this is where we're going to start adding some fade to the shadows and highlights. So I'm going to drop a point on these crosshairs over here, and then we're going to start by bringing the top end of the tone curve down to fade out those highlights as well as bring the tail end at the bottom up to fade out the shadows we don't want to do it too much so that we crush the blacks just going to drop these shadows a little bit more and i'm going to leave that where it is for now up next i'm going to move on to the colors and this is where it really will start to come to life i'm going to start off with the blue as this is probably the main color that he changes in his photos and first things first that we're going to do is drop the saturation of this blue quite a bit as well as the luminance we can also bring this hue over to the left into the more teal color to get the same tones that alan does i'm also going to go over to the aqua and slide this more into the blue zone and then really just make sure that all of the other colors fall into the blue and orange splits so i'm going to come over to the green and push that hue slider all the way over to the left into the yellows and i'm also just going to bring that saturation down quite a bit he doesn't seem to have that many greens in his photos he usually turns the greens to oranges or yellows speaking of the yellows i'm going to bring the slider all the way over into the orange side again just really emphasizing that blue and orange splits up next the oranges i'm going to bring this a little bit more into the red side just at about minus 25 and then i'm also going to bring the saturation of the oranges up to about plus 25 to 30. Moving on to the red, I'm gonna bring this more into that orange zone. The magenta, we're gonna leave that where it is for right now. And the purple, we're just gonna bring down the saturation of that purple. He doesn't really seem to have that many purple in his photos as well. Up next, I'm gonna add some split toning to this photo. Starting with the highlights, I'm gonna put a bit of a warm split tone in it at around a hue of 50 and just bringing that saturation up to about 10, not too much. And then as for the shadows, we're gonna add a bit of a cooler color coming over to around 220 on the hue and the saturation up to about 12. I do think we can brighten up these orange just a bit more or what we could even do is just play around with the temperature and just slide that up to increase the orange and the warmth in the photo I do think I still need to play around with the tone curves a bit more this is where it becomes really difficult to try and replicate a style is because these tone curves are so intricate and they make such a big difference for minor adjustments so you really will just have to mess around with this until you find the right tone curves but this is the basic shape of them Okay, so I've just played around with the tone curves a bit more. If you want to see how it looks, this is what I've done. Very slight minor adjustments, but then what I'm going to do next is just desaturate these blues even more, and there we can see we're really starting to get the look and feel that Alan gets in his photos. As for the detail, I'm going to leave that where it is. I am going to enable the lens profile corrections. I don't think he adds any grain to these photos, but he might add a little bit of vignetting, so I'm just going to bring that down ever so slightly just so it's not too noticeable. And and then we're gonna leave the camera calibration where it is for right now. So I am happy with how this is looking for right now. What I'm gonna do next is come over and make a preset. So click on your presets tab, click on the plus icon in the top right corner here. Make sure that everything is checked apart from the white balance, exposure, as well as the graduated and radial filters. I'm just gonna save this to my user presets as AP and hit create. So now if you scroll down to your user presets folder, you will see your preset AP. So now what I can do is go over to any of my other photos that I've selected for this tutorial I'm gonna click on this one for right now and apply that AP preset and we can see how these colors are really starting to pop the tones of the blue and orange so from this point you really just need to make minor adjustments as to how you want it to look I'm gonna bring down the exposure of this quite a bit more and I really just need to find a balance between getting that blue and orange split. So I'm gonna bring the saturation of these blues up quite a bit because the blues just aren't that saturated in this photo. But already we can see that we're starting to get that split. And now we can go ahead and apply that to almost any other photo and get the same look and feel. 
So really not much you have to do once you've got that preset created. All I did on this one was increase the exposure. And these photos are looking really, really good. Just applying that preset once again. So for this one, I was meant to take it like this just to be a bit different and show the energy and vibrance that New York had. Just for those wondering, but I'm gonna brighten up the exposure just a little bit maybe bring up those blacks slightly and then I'm gonna bring a graduated filter over the sky over here just to get those really moody dark feels that Alan gets in his skies a lot of the times. We could even add a little bit more of a teal color to the sky. So if I compare it to this photo over here, really getting those same tones. So just our last photo of the day, ending it off at the Oculus on Fulton Street. It's gonna apply our presets, and then we can see that he is a lot more blue in this case, so I'm just gonna bring that temperature slider over to the left so we start to get those blues. I'm sure this was taken at different times of the day, so my sky is way more overexposed and bright than he's is, but that is looking good. I'm gonna leave this here. Let me know what you guys think of the tutorial. Did I nail the style? Did I not? What did I miss? Tell me all of the things down in the comments below. And that's it. That is how to edit like Alan Palanda. Once again, please go check him out. He is an amazing photographer, an amazing editor, an amazing designer, and just visual artist in general. So please go check him out, support his work. I'll link his presets in the description below as well, so please go check that out. Please go check out my own accounts as well, which is at Visual Rev, and also leave your suggestions down in the comments below for any other photographers that you'd like to see tutorials of. Anyway, I'm gonna leave this one here. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you did like the video, please leave a like. If you're new to this channel, please hit that subscribe button for new videos almost every single day. We are on the grind. We're doing this. But in the meantime, remember to stay weird, don't die, and make it happen. I'll see you guys in the next one.